It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. fabulous figure of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same hop you cheer in motion pictures with the same California you've laughed at a hundred times in your local theater. These famous partners come riding into radio just as you've asked for them. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Our story tonight, The Coltsville Terror. What a threatening set of weather conditions can do. At the moment, they're joining forces with Hopalong Cassidy to get California into a church. A deserted church in the deserted town of Coltsville. Black clouds are piling up overhead, and the church stands silent and foreboding like the rest of the town. I'll take in the saddlebags. You tie the horses and lean to and back. Hoppy, this infernal ghost town is bad enough, but... Why do we have to pick an empty church to bunk in? Oh, what's wrong with that? Lots of people go to church. Well, uh, yeah, but it ain't the church, Hoppy. It's that marble orchard out and back there. <laughs> you know how I feel about them things. They, they get under my scalp and tickle my brain. <laughs> ah, just calm your goose pimples, California. No one out in the graveyard's going to hurt you. We're ten miles back to Fenwell, if we don't get out from under those big black clouds, we're going to have to paddle our way home to the bar 20. But this concern coach, Phil. Not a soul around. All them empty buildings and... You know what I think? I'd be interested to hear. I think you're just afraid to be alone with your conscience. <laughs> now, why don't you forget the ghost and take care of the horses while I... Wait a minute. Listen. Uh, you, uh, you're sure this here church ain't uh, occupied, Hoppy? I don't know. Let's take a look. Sounds like it's coming from that room over there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> ah, it's only the organ here with the wind blowing through the pipes up in the loft. Well, the loft, the, the, well, well uh, what do you know? <laughs> the wind through the... Now I feel better. But not much better. <laughs> Come on now. There's a wood stove in the next room, and I could use some of those beans of yours. You know, it'd be nice having music with our dinner. Hey, California? <laughs> ah, these beans. What a waste of talent, California. You know, you'd make some woman a wonderful wife. Oh, huh? she really thinks so, Hoppy? Uh, wife? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, What's the matter? I'm either losing my mind or I'm hearing that organ play a uh, tune. Well, most organs do play tunes. Don't go and stop being so calm, Hoppy. Uh, I didn't want to come into this here spooky church in the first place. Oh, would you rather be out in that downpour? In Tukna would. I didn't like it when we first came into this church with the organ howling away and you were telling me it was the wind and now it started playing a, a tune. <laughs> well, well, what do you got to say? Who, oh, me? Oh, I'd say Coastville has very remarkable wind. And as much as I regret leaving these beans, I guess we better investigate. Come along, California. <laughs> We continue with Hopalong Cassidy in just a moment.
back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Coltsville Terror. Hoppy and California have found shelter from the storm in an abandoned church in the deserted town of Coltsville. Or at least they thought the church was abandoned until a moment ago. Come in, California? Depends where you're going. Let's take a look at that organ again. Uh, why don't I just stay here and mind these beans? And... Well, if you'd rather be alone. On second thought, I'm right behind you, Hoppy. <laughs> I've never seen you so scared before. I ain't scared of nothing I can draw a bead on, but when it comes to... Why, a ghost. Uh... Here we go. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry if we frightened you, miss. You see, we... Oh, yes. Yes, you did frighten me. Would you mind telling us what you're doing here? Well, ma'am, we, we thought we'd spend the night here out of the storm. I'm I'm Hopalong Cassie, and this is California Carlson. We we figured the church was deserted like the rest of the town, and... Uh... And, as you see, it isn't. So if you don't Just mind... Just a minute, Mother. This was your father's church, Susan. I see no reason why it should be used as a hotel I by... said just a minute, Mother. It happens to be my church now. Father used to think of it as a place of shelter. As far as I'm concerned, it still is. If you care to spend the night here, Mr. Cassidy, you're perfectly welcome. Thank you very much. I'm Susan Crow, and this is my mother. How do you do, Miss Crow? Hi. Mother and I come down here evenings to play the organ. There's very little else to do around here. I see. You say this was your father's church? Yes. He's out in the graveyard now, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, I'm sorry. My mother and I and Deacon Black are the only ones left in Coltsville now. Deacon Black? Well, Mr. Black isn't a real deacon. We just call him that because he's a fine man who helped Father build the church. He's been very faithful to us since... since Father was killed last spring. Well, it seems to me that's about the time people began leaving Coltsville. We'd, we'd prefer not to discuss that now, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, I'm sorry. Still, I can't help but be a little curious as to what would make a hundred people suddenly pick up and leave town. That sounds like we're due for another downpour, ma'am. We'd be happy to take you home I if... I think the... that's a good idea. We live just down the street, Mr. Cassidy. You can see the house from this window here. Look out! What's the matter? Out of the way! That beam! The beam, it came down from the loft up there. You all right, Mother? Oh, it, it just missed me. That thunderclap jarred loose. Oh, look! It crashed down on the organ bench. Right where you were sitting, Susan. Thunderation. That was a mite too close for comfort. Let me see that. This church is only two years old. I don't see how an accident like that could... Wait! It wasn't an accident, ma'am. What do you mean? Well, this timber's been sawed almost through. I think someone figured the vibration of those organ pipes had jarred loose. So it would drop right on the bench. What? Why, who would do that? I don't know who, Miss Crow. It looks like somebody was trying to kill you. Kill me? I think so. Now, why don't you be sensible and tell me about this Coalsville business? But nothing can be done about it now. Well, maybe not. But I'd like to hear about it anyway. All right, Mr. Cassidy. Good. Right now, though, I, I think the best place to talk is home. Now, uh, you say your father built the church, Miss Crow? Yes, with his own money. The land was donated by the community. He intended to give it to the people in a few years. And that's when it started, Mr. Cassidy. What started? This feeling of dread and terror... It fell over the whole town like a shadow, and there were shootings, strange disappearances. No one knew who'd be next. Everyone kept their doors locked or, or moved away. There was no reason for it, no explanation. Only fear everywhere. But didn't you suspect someone? That was the terrible part of it. No one else had any idea who was behind it. Folks became panic-stricken and whispered about the coat their terror. Father refused to run away. He tried to get the people together to fight it. Then, four months ago, on his way home from church one night, he was shot from ambush. No warning, nothing. I see. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Black, come in. Susan, I, I have important news. I've just talked to Mr. Riker and, uh... Oh. Mr. Black, this is Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Black, how do you do? Mr. Cassidy and his friend are spending the night over at the church on account of the storm. Oh, what were you saying about Mr. Riker? He was completely unreasonable insists the church belongs to no one since it stands on public land. You mean he's going to tear it down, Mr. Black? I'm afraid so. He has no right to tear that church down. My father bought the lumber and built it himself. I told him that. I told him, abandoned or not, it was still a place of worship. 
I said he was committing a sacrilege. He wouldn't listen to me. Uh, excuse me. You say this man wants to tear down the church? That's right. He's been threatening to for a week. Why? He claims he needs finished lumber for a mine building. Well, that's a funny reason. There's plenty of finished lumber in Fenwell. You don't know what this means to us, Mr. Cassidy. The three of us, Susan, Mrs. Crowell, and I, have stayed here in Coatesville. We've defied this terror, risked our lives, in the hope that someday the people would return, that there'd be a real congregation in that church again. Yet this, uh... This Franker fellow wants to tear it down. It doesn't belong to him, Mr. Cassidy. How can he? Well, it seems to me that's a question for the court to settle. Does he have permission or an order of any kind? Oh, he isn't that kind of a man, Mr. Cassidy. He told me he'd be at the church tomorrow morning with ten of his men ready to start. I couldn't reason with him at all. Maybe you didn't talk the right language, Mr. Black. California and I will be on hand when Mr. Racker pulls up in the morning. Now, don't you ladies worry. We'll uh, do our best to make him understand. Bacon's about ready, Hoppy. Breakfast will have to wait. Uh, uh, come over to the window. Where, what is it? Looks like Mr. Racker and party are right on schedule. All right, boys, let's get rolling. We'll haul out the tools, boys. Holy cow, he brung an army with him. Got a lot of foresight, that man. First time I knew a six gun was standard equipment for a carpenter. Come on, California. This gang means business. We'll rejoin Hopalong Cassidy in just a moment. But first, a word from your announcer. back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Coltsville Terror. A violent and evil force has driven away the inhabitants of this little town, and now a gang of thugs from a neighboring town have come to tear down the abandoned church. Hoppy is determined to protect the interests of the late minister's daughter, Susan Crowell, so he and California have been waiting at the church, waiting for Riker and his gang to arrive and attempt the demolition. Uh, Hoppy, are, uh, are we going right up to him? Uh, there's a lot of them, and only two of us. Hey, you two men can start turning down the steeple. You must be getting old if ten men can frighten you. All right, uh, Hoppy, don't go. Howdy there. there. You must be Mr. Riker. Huh? Who are you? The name is Cassidy. What are you doing here? Well, we just spent the night in the church. You just made it, pal. Because it won't be here another night we're tearing it down. You, um, you got the owner's permission? I got all the permission I need, mister. This here church stands on public land. It's abandoned. And in my law book, that means she belongs to the man who can best use her. You know, um, I don't see it that way at all. Oh, you don't. Take it easy, boys. I'll handle this. This Budinski. If you don't mind, Mr. Riker, keep your hands off and your hips while... Hoppy explains. I don't think I need to explain. Mr. Riker knows as well as I do that he has to have a court order to demolish a building. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. 
Mr. Cassidy. I'm just straightening things out for Mr. Riker, Miss Crowell. You didn't straighten out nothing. That church is coming down and no one's going to stop it. Mr. Riker, I tried to tell you last night. Let me shut up too, Black. I'm through talking about it. Where's your mother, Susan? She's here too. You better take her inside the church. Uh, would you go along with her, Mr. Black? Mr. Cassidy, I'm trying to consider Susan's father in this. Rather than have more violence, more bloodshed, I think we should let Mr. Riker do as he wants. Well, what about it, Cassidy? Susan? No. It's not right, and I won't stand for it. That's all I want to know. Come on, Mother. Well, I, I'll go with you. That wasn't so thoughtful, Cassidy. They're liable to get hurt in there when we start work. Tell me something, Riker. Yeah? What are you really after? You wouldn't go to all this trouble for some second-hand lumber you could buy for $20 in Fenwell. The cattle business is a great game, Cassidy. Maybe you'd better stay in it. Now get out of this town before I lose what patience I got left. I'm not getting out until you show me a court order to demolish this church. Okay, Jack. That wasn't smart, Riker. Not smart at all. I'll show you who's running. Nice work, Coffee. Quick, into the church. Get down low. Those walls are thin. Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Cassidy, are you hurt? No, keep down. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, I knew this would happen. I knew it. Easy, Mrs. Crowell. Sometimes it's better to fight, Mother. Oh, that's what your father said. Look what happened to him. I told you, Mr. Cassidy, we should have... It's gone. too late to do anything about that now. At least Riker knows he'll have a fight on his hands. California, take a look out that window. What are they doing? Looks like he's talking to his men out there in that grove of trees. I could pick off Riker like a fly in a white ceiling. Put your gun down. Oh, no, I don't mean to argue, Hoppy, but looks to me like we've gone about as far as we can with diplomacy. i got to think this out. That fella sure wants $20 worth of lumber. I wonder why. <laughs> Keep down, everybody. Mr. Black, you stay here with the women. Where are you going? There might be some old furniture or something in the basement. We'll need it to barricade these windows. Mr. Cassidy... How long do you intend to keep this up? Until Mr. Riker decides it's cheaper to buy his lumber in Fenwell. Come on, California, let's see what we can find. Now, that bench ought to do for the front window. Oh, I got it. Now, this thing looks like a bureau. May need some help getting it up the stairs. I... Uh... What's, uh, what's the matter? You smell something funny. Well, I got this bench in my nose. Well, put it down. Yeah. Now. Nope. Don't smell nothing. Well, I sure do. I wonder. Uh, could you wonder just as well after we get this stuff upstairs? I mean, before Riker shoots out all the windows? Wait a minute. I think I know why Riker wants this lumber. Yeah. Uh, huh? Wonder if I could get through to Fenwell. They'd have the records there in the courthouse. Come here, let's take a look out the window. All right, what's heating you now, Hoppy? I can hardly see through this thing. The glass is all... There. I might have known it. They run off our horses. I'll have to steal one. Oh, would you mind telling me what you're talking about, Hoppy? You're going to have to hold the fort alone, California. Give me five minutes. Then let go with both the Colt and the Winchester from the south side of the building. Never mind aiming. Just get their attention. Well, 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 well. What will you be doing? Stealing one of their horses. I got a date with a man in Fenwell. <laughs> Riker, I didn't bargain for nothing like this. Shut up. I won't shut up. We'll never get away with this strong arm stuff, and you know it. They got the law in Fenwell. You heard what the boss said, didn't you? That church comes down by nightfall or else. Yeah, but I... And it don't make any difference to the boss where the law is. Once that church is down, the crowds are licked. Now, look, Jerry. You're in for your percentage, same as the rest of us. If you get a beef, why don't you take it right to the boss? Well, I ain't going to walk up to him and... And neither am I. I'll get around to the south side with the rest of the boys. If Cassidy wants to shoot it out, it's okay with me. That won't be good enough, Riker. Huh? Oh, boss, I... Shut up. that to break your lousy neck. I'm doing the best I well, can. Well, it's not good enough. You had Cassidy right under your nose this morning. Ten men behind you. Why'd you let him get inside that church? I couldn't shoot him down. Well, you're going to have to do it now. Huh? I've got a hunch he's going to try and break through. Get over to Penwell. 
Well, if that's all you're worried about, boss... It's enough, isn't it? You ain't got a chance. We got the horse. Riker! Riker! What's the matter, Jerry? Cassidy! He... What about Cassidy? Just on right away. Grab one of our horses. Uh, you see what I mean, Riker? Get the boys, Jerry. Mount up and follow them. But he run off all our horses. They're spread clean out over the countryside. Don't stand there, Riker. Get the boys together. I don't care how you do it, but you've got to stop Cassidy before he gets to Fenwell. You uh, no time to talk, Tom. Quick, get me the cold still property record. You got them here, haven't you? Sure. Well, what's up, Hoppy? I don't know yet. Look, I want all correspondence, copies of letters, anything you got on that cold still section since everybody left town. Oh, getting ideas, Hoppy? <laughs> Just guess it, Tom. You might check with the sheriff and see if he can round up a posse in a hurry. If I'm right, we're going to need it. <laughs> up, Sheriff? I'm aiming to round up a posse, Jeff, and do it quick. You mean there's trouble? Not yet, but there will be soon. We're riding into Colesville. Colesville? What's the matter, Dad? What are you and the Sheriff talking about? I'm asking Jeff to join a posse to ride into Colesville, ma'am. Oh, no. Dad, you can't. You know what always happens. But somebody's got to do it, Mary. You're all I got left, Dad. They, they even got my husband, Sheriff. You can't take Dad. But if we could clean this awful mess up, we could move back to Colesville. Wouldn't you like that, honey? There ain't nobody ever going to clean that up. It's evil and terrible. There's one man that can do it, ma'am. Hop along Cassidy. Cassidy? He's here? He's on his way into Colesville now, alone. That's why I want to round up this here posse, quick. But why in tarnation didn't you say so before? Uh, what do you say now, honey? Don't just stand there, Dad. Get your horse. Why, if I didn't have on a skirt, I'd hitch up to a horse myself. Oh, I can't tell you I can't stand any more of this, Susan. We've got to hold out, Mother. I've done all I can do, Susan. I risked my life by going outside to see Mr. Riker. I pleaded with him, and he's finally agreed to let us all go in peace. If we leave now. <laughs> Mr. Calvin, I refuse to stay here a minute longer. I'm sorry, ma'am. I hope you told me to hold the fork till he got back, and we're staying right here. Good heavens, Mr. Carlson, can't you be reasonable? It's dark outside. We've been here all day. And maybe you can tell us why Mr. Cassidy walked out without so much as a word to us. Mrs. Crow, I don't know how long many years it is since I took to riding with Hopalong Cassidy. I, I trusted him the minute we met, and I... I've been trusting them ever since. So far, I ain't ever been wrong. Mr. Carlson's right, Mother. This is no time to give up. But how do we know he got through? He might have been shot. They might be holding him anything. Oh, it's not quite that serious, Mrs. Crowell. Where, Hoppy! Oh, where have you been? Over in Fenwell, trying to find out what made Mr. Riker so anxious about getting this lumber. It's an interesting question, Mrs. Crowell. And I found a very interesting answer. We return to Hop Along Cassidy in just a moment. conclude the story, The Coltsville Terror. Hoppy has just returned from Fenwell. Sure now he has found the answer to the riddle of Mr. Riker's lumber, and the answer too to the terror that has struck the little town of Coltsville. 
What do you mean, Hoppy? Uh, what about the lumber? It wasn't the lumber. It never was. What is it, Mr. Cassidy? Why? A few minutes after I got the Fenwell to look at the property records on this land, the stage pulled in. There was a man from the east on it, a fellow named Edward Hines. Anyone ever heard of him? No. Well, I had a talk with Mr. Hines. I found out that all the land in Coltsville, except for the 20 acres of church property here, had been bought up by one man. What? I thought the land was worthless. Well, this one fellow didn't. He planned to sell it to Mr. Hines for over $100,000, provided he could deliver the property on the dome itself. Dome? Uh, what, uh, what's a dome, Harvey? It's what the church sits right on top of, California. An oil dome. So rich that the oil is seeping into the basement. That's what I smelled this morning. Well, doggone it. And who's been buying up the property? Well, it's been bought in the names of a dozen men. Most of them in that bunch with Riker, working for a percentage. But there were private arrangements between them and the fellow they called the boss. And this man was responsible for... For what happened here? Of course he was. He's the kind of a man who will stop at nothing. Murder, robbery, terror... That's enough, Cassidy. Ah, Mr. Black! So it was! Never mind that now. Put it out! Your head. Hoppy! Hoppy! Yeah. Hoppy, you hurt? No, oh, I'm all right. That second one did it, California. Oh. Well, I think Mr. Black's career is about over. Did he get? Yes, Susan. The deacon. I can't believe it. Neither could I until I saw it in black and white. What, uh, what about Riker? They got the Fenwell just in time to meet the posse. Well, looks like you got a job on your hands, Miss Susan. Convincing the folks who left town that Colesville wants them back. Only this time to live in peace. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Then just forget it. I I like doing favors for people. Uh, Hoppy. What is it, California? Uh, as a special favor, us being partners and all. Uh, yeah. Next time we get caught in a thunderstorm and we run across an empty church, uh, what do you say we just get uh, wet? Things are going to be mighty different in Coldsville now, thanks to Hopalong Cassidy. He and California are heading back to the Bar 20 now, and they hope to get a spell of rest. But you can just bet that won't last for long. There'll be somebody in trouble, and then Hop will go into action again. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Coldsville Terror was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. Commodore Productions.